as we are celebrating this great solemnity, the Immaculate Conception of Blessed Virgin Mary. In the church, Mary's prophecy given in her Magnificat, Behold, all generations will call me blessed. And we know that. And she said, because Almighty has done, done great things for me. So humble words of Our Lady. Even in our life also, we also will be able to say that because God created all of us to praise him. Psalm 119 verses 175 says, God, may I live only to praise your name. Our life should become a hymn of praise to the most holy trinity. That's not just, sometimes we say without meaning, praise the Lord or hallelujah, whatever. Remembering the beautiful words of St. Augustine, we should praise the Lord with our lips. We should praise the Lord with our hearts. Above all, we should praise the Lord with our life. That's what we are called to do. Praise the Lord. Especially this Magnificat has got a deep meaning. I had the opportunity to give few retreats for poor clays of perpetual adoration sisters. And I was staying with uh, different monasteries. And one of the things that touched me, you know, every hour the sisters change because 24 hours sisters are always in front of the blessed sacrament. And one of the things that really touched me, and every time they were saying this Magnificat. And I understood, I would, you know, the deep meaning of this Magnificat. Church, every evening with the Vespers, we say this Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So we have to give thanks and glory to God all the time. That has to come, our life has to become a glory uh, to the Lord who created us. So that's what, because Mother Mary said, that word fulfilled when the Catholic Church declared four dogmas of faith about her. You know that the first one is the Immaculate Conception. The second, the Perpetual Virginity. Third, the divinity, Divine Maternity. And the fourth, the Assumption. This Immaculate Conception is a dogma based mainly on Christian tradition and theological reasoning. It was defined in 1854 by Pope Pius IX as a dogma of faith. So what is Immaculate Conception? I remember once I was uh, attending uh, this mass, Solemnity Mass uh, in, uh, in Purdue University that the chaplain was saying, was saying that this is one of the confused um, solemnities or the feast because most of the people not aware or Know the, they don't know the meaning of what is Immaculate Conception. So the Immaculate Conception means Mary was preserved, immune from original sin by the singular grace of God and by virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ, Savior of the human race. That's why Catechism of the Catholic Church says. So Mother Mary was very specially chosen by God, like how uh, everything happened. And we know that today's first reading is Genesis chapter three. 
if we want to understand scripture if we want to understand everything we have to go through genesis to revelation then only we will be able to understand the salvation history how everything unfolded so ever since the fall god announced god never abandoned us the real plan of god in genesis 1 26 to 30 when god created everything we see god created everything in god created men in his own image and likeness to be perfect to be fruitful and to live above all to live in his presence that's why in genesis uh, 17 1 to 3 there we see um, genesis uh, 17 1 to 3 it's a beautiful uh, word of god there we see uh, god said to abraham the age of 90 god said i am the almighty god live in my presence we heard the initial plan of god you know today when i was hearing this word of god i said oh this is my goodness this is really appropriate for this solemnity we heard this beautiful word of god thus he chose us in christ before the world was made to be holy and faultless before him in love that was the initial plan and none of us are holy none of us are immaculate there's only one immaculate uh, mother mary and we are not holy we are not immaculate none of our parents are immaculate nobody is immaculate because that's the fruit of the original sin and that was not the plan of god everything was clean the plate was clean we put dirt into it so that's a feast we are very specially celebrating but what is the message what god wants us it's very clearly god wants all of us to be holy god wants all of us to be spotless god wants that we have to grow in holiness that we have to slowly sanctify ourselves so that we will be able to experience him matthew chapter 5 there we see 7 and 8 blessed are the pure in heart they shall see god and we know that we are not as we are living in this world every day dirt comes but that's why we have the sacraments we make confessions we repent we go through the scriptures John 17 17 to 19 I sanctify myself so that they too may be sanctified Gospel of John chapter 15 Through my words you will be cleansed 5 1 to 5 jo- Gospel of John chapter 15 verses 1 to 5 you are cleansed so therefore it is very important in this feast God is specially inviting all of us to cleanse ourselves and we know that it's not going to happen with our own strength I think 2 corinthians 1 12 to 14 saint paul said when i was with you i led in an unadulterated you know holy life pure life that's not with my own strength but with the grace of god remember god has given us the grace and today uh, during our mass uh, uh, priest who was sharing the word of god i like that one story he was saying that you know it's a it's a beautiful story and this happened to us also sometimes you know it happened to me also this little child uh was started saying hail mary you know started learning hail mary and we know that hail mary prayer hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus that's that's the way we say and this little child started saying hail mary full of grace and the lord is with me instead of the lord is with you and you know theologically when you think about it it's correct the lord is with me that is our identity the moment we receive the baptism the first thing the mark 
is a gateway for all other sacraments. We receive the Spirit of God. We receive the grace of God. And that moment onwards, the Christ's presence is in us. But again, Luke 1, 26 to 30, I don't think we'll be able to share that word of God. That uh, angel said, Hail Mary, full of grace. That was the greeting. The Lord is with you. And this is the same thing during the Mass we say, isn't it? And before the Gospel we reading says, the Lord be with you. Because in every sacrament, the presence of Christ is not just in, you know, in, the, in the priest. In, we, in the liturgy we see the first, the presence of Christ we see, the priest, the word of God, and also in the, the people who attend, and also in the sacraments. That is why it's reminding us most of the time before it starts the preface, we say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. And this is the Christian spirituality. The Lord be with you. And sometimes, of course, including me, without even realizing, we say that, and, and also with you. But we are not realizing it. But the word of God says, and that is the real spirituality. Identifying the presence of Christ in every person we meet. The Lord is with you. I love you. I respect you. I help you to become a better person because the presence of my Lord is in you. And that we need to identify. Sometimes, like Mother Mary, we won't be able to say that. Hail Mary, full of grace. We are not full of grace. Then maybe the full of grace comes, we'll go up. We'll be with the Lord for the time. But we all have the elements of grace. And that grace is everything. That grace is the most important thing in our life. That is very, very important. So, and during, as we are celebrating this feast, we can examine ourselves. You know, what are the things preventing me to receive more grace in my life? We all need, God wants us to be like Mother Mary, full of grace. But we might be having only, a, you know, maybe 5% or 10%. And this grace has to increase, like John the Baptist said, John 3.30. I must decrease. Jesus must increase in my life. That is very, very important. Only Jesus increase in our life, our life will be different. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, St. Paul said, What I am, I am through the grace of God. The grace is important. And without that grace, whatever we do is useless. That spirit, that grace, that matters. And very often, and we don't even realize, we don't know what is this grace. We don't even know when, when the grace comes, when it goes. So grace comes through our prayerful life, holy life. God wants us to give us the grace. God is waiting to give us the grace. Through sacraments we are receiving the grace. When we attend the mass we are saying that, receiving the grace. When we read the scriptures we are receiving the grace. So 2 Corinthians 6 verses 1 and 2 St. Paul said, we should not lose the grace God has given you know this happens to everyone's life even including my life when i think about it, oh my goodness i've wasted many many graces in my life but remember god is our loving father he loves us he gives us more grace 
Romans 5, 20 and 21. St. Paul said, if you have sinned more, the grace will be more. So grace, God will give grace in abundance. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. It's a free gift of God. But what is important in our life? Sometimes our pride, our spiritual pride is the biggest thing. And so many other things is a hindrance to receive God's grace. Perhaps this is what we have to identify. What are the hindrances? What is preventing in my life to receive God's grace? And once we remove that, you know, Jesus said to that Samaritan woman, I think in the Gospel of John chapter uh, 4, verse 10, it's a beautiful word of God. Jesus is speaking to us also. If you only knew what God is offering and who it is that's saying to you, give me something to drink. If only knew. So we have to be open like our blessed mother. We can say, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done according to thy word. Once we say that, the journey begins. God will find many ways to bless us. God will find many ways to give us his grace. But we need to be open. We need to be humble. That humility is a very important thing. It has to come from our heart. The fact that when we realize our unworthiness, weaknesses, failures, if we look at it, sometimes can be a very much discouraging. But humility will lead us to look at Jesus. Like St. Teresa of Child, Jesus said, since I am so weak, fragile, helpless, so I decided to be with the divine grace, to cling to that divine grace, to cling to my almighty God always in my life. That clinging, a little child cling to a father or a mother because comes from that helplessness. So we also have to cling to our blessed mother also. She will help us, she will prepare us, she will lead us to uh, receive her son Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are celebrating this solemnity of Immaculate Conception, remember a few things. First, we are not immaculate, but we are called to be perfect. Matthew 5, 48, be perfect like your heavenly father is perfect. So therefore, be open to that grace. And the third thing, identify the presence of Christ in every person we meet. That is a spirituality. Rather than gossiping, rather than finding faults, rather than, you know, saying negative, but try to see Christ. That is, could be very subtle. It may not be visible. It may not be beyond our sight. Like St. John, Gospel of John, chapter 21, he said, it is the Lord in every person we meet. So for that grace, we can pray. And I wish my dear brothers and sisters a happy feast, a joyful feast to all of you. And may Almighty God especially bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.